Hilchais Mila Perek Shlishi. The Laws of Circumcision, Chapter 3. We've done the uh, studying about the parameters of the mitzvah. What's called the eighth day, what's not, how to do the process of the bris. Now that Amam goes through the actual ceremony. Halacha Aleph, Hamal. The person who is doing the circumcision. <coughs> Today we call him the Mohel. The one who's performing the Milah, Mevarech Kodem Sheyamul. Before he makes the snip, he makes the following blessing. Asher kichanu b'mitzvotav etzivanu al hamila. That Hashem commanded us with his mitzvahs. Sanctified us with his mitzvahs and commanded us about the Brit. Im mal ben chavero. That's how you make it if you're giving a Brit to someone else's son. The im mal et beno, but if you're giving a Brit to your own son, mevarech, then you make the blessing that tzivanu lamul et haben. Remember a couple of chapters ago that Ammam says, that if you're doing a mitzvah yourself, then you make it with a lamid. Lik boa mezuzah. Litol lulav. But if you're doing it for, some, for someone else, then you say al. So over here too, if you're a mohel for someone else, you say al hamila. For your own son, you say lamul et haben. Today we do al hamila in all cases. I have a friend, actually a classmate, who did his own son's bris. He wasn't even, he wasn't even a trained mohel. Really? Wow. Yeah, he just, the mohel stood next to him, guided his hand, and he did the bris himself. But you nevertheless make al hamila, not lamul et haben. That's for the mohel. Va'avi haben mevarech bracha acheret. The father of the child, whether or not he's doing the Brit, he makes a separate blessing, which is, Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kichanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu L'hachniso B'vrito Shal Abraham Avinu. Hashem commanded us to bring our children into the Brit, into the covenant of Abraham Avinu. Mitzvah al ha'av l'amulad b'no. Says the Rambam, the mitzvah is on the father to give his son a Brit. Yater al mitzvah she metzuvin Yisrael. More than the mitzvah that all Jews have to make sure that there's no uncircumcised Jew. Two days ago we saw that if a father is absent or he chooses not to give a son a Brit, the Bed Din has to take responsibility and give the kid a Brit. So nevertheless, when they do that, it's a lesser mitzvah. The, the father's mitzvah of his own child is greater than when the Bed Din takes it over. So therefore... Right, that's another example where Bed Din is in charge, yeah. So because the father's mitzvah is greater, lefichach, therefore, says the Rambam, im en sham aviv, if the father is not present at the Brit, en mevarchin achareha brachazu, the Rambam holds, we do not make the other blessing of lahach niso no one else makes that. That's the father's special mitzvah. V'yesh mi shehora, there are those that teach, sh'yibarchu ota beidin o echad minam, that no, the beidin or somebody else standing there should make the, the blessing. But the Rambam says, ve'en ra'u ila asot ken. It's not fitting to do that. The Rambam holds, that's it. Only the father gets to make it. If not, nobody else. By the way, it doesn't say exactly when the father makes this blessing, but the Rambam's grandson writes that his, he saw his grandfather many times make the bracha before the Brit. That's how Sfaradim do it till today. The father makes the blessing before the actual Mila. But the Ashkenazim, and I believe Chabad custom is that way as well, that we do the, the blessing after the Brit. The Mohel makes the blessing al Hamila, makes the cut, then the father says, the blessing of Lahach Nisab Bivta Shalom Avinu. Okay. By the way, the other commentaries also say that if the father's not there, the Sandak, the one holding the baby, should make the blessing of Lahach Nisab. But the Ramam says only the father. Halacha Bet, Ve'im Hayusham Omdin. If there were people there, okay? Typically, you should do a Brit with people around. The Minag is to have at least a minion. But if you don't, you're doing a Brit in a private home then uh, it's okay too. But the Ramam says, if there are those standing there, they should respond. When the father makes the blessing, Omrim, they should say, the same way you brought him in. To the Brit, so too should you merit to bring him up to Torah, to marriage and to good deeds. Today, we don't say it about the father. We don't say, we say, about the kid. The same way he came into the covenant, so too he, come, he should come to Torah, Chupa and good deeds. Then there's a special blessing that should be made either by the father or by the mohel or by somebody else standing there. Like you see here in the picture. After the Brit, they honor somebody else. It's my father doing the bracha. To make the blessing. What's the blessing? Blessed you Hashem, King of the universe. You sanctified the friend from the stomach. That's a reference to Yitzchak. Yitzchak, Unlike Abraham, who came to Judaism later, Yitzchak was holy from the, from the womb, the moment he was conceived. And he placed a law into um, his flesh. 
by doing the Brit Milah, Hashem is putting Himself onto the flesh of the human body. And then from then on, all of His children were sealed with the sign of the Holy Brit. Al Cain, therefore, Bishar Zot, in reward for this, Kel Chai, Chel Cain, the living God who is our portion and our rock, we ask Hashem, Tzavei, command, or other Nuschaot have Tziva, Hashem commanded, Lehatzil Yedidut She'erenu Mishachat, to save um, the beloved of our flesh from being destroyed, Leman Brito Asher Sam Bivsarenu, because of the Brit which you put into our flesh. So either it's a statement about the past, because Hashem saw how careful we keep the Milah, he commanded that all Jews will be saved because of the Brit, or we're asking. Al-Kain, therefore, Tzavei, Hashem, we should command from now on that anybody that has a Brit should be saved. Baruch Atah Hashem, Koret HaBrit, blessed are you God, who makes, who, who seals the covenant. Ba'avi HaBen, also, Svaradim have the custom that the father of the child, Mevarech Shechianu. He makes Shechianu. Ashkenazim don't do Shechianu by a Brit, but all Svaradim, they do. Why not? Because the Talmud says, Yesh Tzar. Shechianu, you make a blessing on, on joy. But here there's, a, there's pain for the kid. Latinok. Latinok. Okay. We can. Can. Yeah. Maybe a little longer, a couple of more words. The Rambam only writes the halachot of a Brit. You know, it's one of the few ceremonies in Judaism that's like rich with customs. There's so many minhagim. You know, like the Zohar says, you stay up the night before. And then, then you should do it a Brit Milah should be done ideally in a shul, there should be a minion. You have over here in the picture, Kisesh al-Eliyahu. He doesn't write about this in the Rambam, but you're supposed to do a Brit on a special chair. Because Eliyahu and Avi once badmouthed the Jewish people that they don't keep Hashem's Torah. So Hashem said, <laughs> from now on, you're going to have to be present by every single Brit and watch how my kids keep the Torah. Uh, there's also a custom that a couple brings in the baby. Right, you ever see that? They have a different couple bringing them in. That's called the Kvater in Yiddish. They say it started because after a woman gives birth, she's tamei tumat nida, she's ritually impure. So the father and mother can't hand off the baby to each other. So technically it came out that they had another couple doing it. It's a, it's a big skula for having children to, to be the, 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 to be the kvater. Everybody who's involved with the bridge should wear a talit. That's the custom today. There's a sandak, somebody who holds the baby. Yes, yes, you wear a talis, yeah. When the baby comes in, there's a custom to say, Baruch Haba. Yeah, welcome. You know why? Because the word Haba, take the letters, He is five. Every letter has a numerical value. He is five, Bet is two, Aleph is one. Five plus two plus one is eight. Brit Milah is Bayom Hashmini. It's on the eighth day. So you say, blessed is one that comes. And you say a couple of psukim. The Ramam also doesn't mention at all, there's a big custom since the times of the second temple, that after a Brit Milah, we give the name to the child. Right? That, that, that's when we name a baby. So that's a, that's a big part of the Brit. Is the baby naming? What do you do with the postscript? Huh? You bury it. Anyway. Yeah. You know. Do you have to bury it in like the place where the child is buried? Or no, no. No, no connection. No connection. Where the brick was done, obviously. No, it could be anywhere. Yeah. It doesn't have to be somewhere. Huh? No, no. I, I, I read today. I, didn't, I never knew this. That you know how um, in the middle of the bracha they give wine to the baby. Mm -hmm. okay. So it says in the in the Sfarim that the person feeding the wine to the baby should make his fingers in the shape of Shin Dalid Yud, the name of Hashem. So you have these three fingers, are Shin. And then if you give the wine with the first finger, you dip it in like this, it becomes like a Dalid. And then your thumb is the Yud. So Shin Dalid Yud, you dip it in the wine, you give it with your finger. Others say the opposite, that the thumb is the Dalid, this is the Shin, these three fingers, and the pinky you should give the wine is the Yud. So today, if you'll watch, they give the baby twice. Once with this finger, I want with this one to fulfill both customs. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the, uh, that, that's the minhagim. But the Ramam is only concerned with the halakha. So he only writes, you know, what's the actual practices. Halakha dalit. Hamalet hagerim. If somebody is giving a brit to a convert, mevarech, you make a special blessing. So the commentaries say, this is the blessing which you make afterwards. The regular blessing before, al hamila, or lamulet hagerim. But uh, afterwards, you make the following longer blessing. Baruch Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam. You commanded us to circumcise the converts and to extract from them a little bit of the blood of the covenant. Because if not for the blood of the Brit, heaven and earth could not exist. As it says, If not for the fact that my covenant existed day and night, I would never have made the laws of heaven and earth. In other words, Hashem says, the world depends on Jews keeping Brit. 
Halacha hey hamal et avdo. If somebody gives a brit to his slave, right? We saw before that there's a mitzvah on the master to, to give his, his slave circumcision. Mevarech, you make a blessing. You gave us a commandment to, to circumcise the slaves. And to extract from them the blood of the covenant. If not for the blood of the covenant, heaven and earth wouldn't exist. If you give a brit to someone else's slave, Mivarech al milata avadim. You only do lamul with a lamid if it's your own slave. Someone else's slave is al, like all other blessings. The hamal adam gadol. Somebody gives a brit to an adult male. Tzarich lechasot ervato ad she yivarech. You have to cover the private area until you make the blessing. Va'acharkach migalehu umaloto. And then you uncover it and right away you give the brit. When it comes to a baby infant, we don't we don't do that. The brit is open, so you can do the mitzvah right away. Halachavav ger shemal kodem shenit gayer. What if you have a convert who had a brit before he was converted? Some non-Jews do circumcision. So when he came to convert, he has no foreskin. The katan shanalad kishuhu mahul. Or if a baby was born already with no foreskin. Kishamatifin mimenu dambrit enan svichin bracha. So you have to extract a little bit of blood. But when you do that, you don't make a blessing. The chen androgino, so to in hermaphrodite, who has both genitalia. En mevarchin al milato. You don't make a blessing on his brit. Mipnei shehu eno zachar vadai. Because he's not for sure a male. Halacha zayin akum. If you have a goy, an idol worshiper, who needed to cut off his foreskin for whatever reason, there was a disease or some boils growing on it. In concept, it should be forbidden for Jews to help him out, to cut it off. Because we have a rule in halacha, an idol worshiper, you don't assist them from a state of where they're going to die and you also don't purposely bring them to that state. So if you have a guy who's already sick, you don't have to help him come out of that state. Even though in concept you're doing a mitzvah with this healing, to cut off a foreskin, and if a guy wants to do a mitzvah according to the Ramam, even though he's not commanded, he's allowed to. But nevertheless, because he wants it to do it for health reasons, not for the mitzvah, so the Jew shouldn't assist him. Today they say that it's, it's okay. <laughs> the, it's, it's different. It's not idol worshiping Gentiles. It's a different type of Gentiles. It can cause uh, problems. Yeah. It conflicts with the oath of the. Right, the Hippocratic oath. Exactly. But if a guy does come over to you and says, you know what, I want to do a Brit. I want to be like the Jews. I want to circumcise for, the, for a holy reason, for a religious reason. A Jew can give him a Brit because he only wants it for a holy reason. Halacha Chet and Tet, the last two halachot, the Rambam tells us about the greatness of Brit Milah on two levels. First halacha Chet, he talks about the greatness of Brit Milah on its own account. The fact that, as the Rebbe says, it finishes off the Etzem Geder Kedushat Yisrael. The, the essential definition of being a holy part of the Jewish people comes from Brit. So therefore the Rambam says, Meusa hi ha'orla. The foreskin is considered to be disgusting. Shemit ganu bahagoyim. In Tanakh, when we want to describe in a negative sense, the idol-worshipping nations, we call them arelim, uncircumcised. Shnei Maraz, it says, ki kol agoyim arelim. All the nations are uncircumcised. Ugdola hi hamila. And Brit is so big, is so great. Shalom nikra Avraham Avinu shalem ad shemal. To the point that Avraham Avinu was never called complete till he did a Brit. Can you imagine? Avraham Avinu did so many things before his Brit. So many acts of self-sacrifice. But until he had a Brit, he was not called complete. Shnei Maraz, it says, you see the pasuk here on the screen. Walk before me and be complete. When will you be complete? When I put your, my covenant between me and you. So important, says the Rambam, is the Brit Milah to establishing the holiness of a Jew that the Chol HaMefer, Britosh Avraham Avinu, anybody who cancels, who breaks the covenant of Avraham Avinu, Vihiniach Arlato, O Meshacha, and he leaves his foreskin, doesn't even cut it, or he pulls it back, like a foreskin restoration type of thing. Even if he keeps the Torah and he does many mitzvahs, he has no portion in the world to come. Which is incredible because if you think about it, the only people who got Torah and mitzvot is the Jewish people. So the only people who can get to Olam Haba is the Jewish people through doing Torah and mitzvahs. Here says the Raman that the Brit is so important to making you a Jew that if you don't have the Brit, even if you do Torah and mitzvahs, it doesn't lead you the normal way where Jews typically go. And now that Amam says, halacha tet, separate halacha, about Brit Milah in contrast to other mitzvahs. The last halacha was Brit on its own. Now let's talk about Brit Milah as one of the 613 
it's still greater than all the mitzvahs. Bo ure'e kama chamura mila. Come and see how strict, how severe the Brit Milah is. Shalom nitla le Moshe Rabbeinu aleha afilu sha'a echat. Even one moment that Moshe Rabbeinu had an opportunity to give a Brit Milah and he didn't, Hashem didn't wait around. He sent the snake to kill him. Afal pi even though he was traveling. Doesn't matter. It was so severe that Moshe had to keep it. V'chol mitzvot ha Torah. All the rest of, of the Torah mitzvot, all the mitzvot in the Torah, nichretu alehen shalosh britot. We only have three covenants on them. Shneemar, as it says, ele divrei habrit, asher tziva Hashem. These are the words of the covenant. That's one. Milvad habrit, asher karati tam bechorev. Besides the brit of Har Sinai. Besham hu omer. And over there it also says, atem nitzavim ayom kulchem lo'avrecha bivrit asher malokecha. I'm standing you over here to pass you through the Brit, the covenant of Hashem. Hareshalosh Britot. So you have three times the word Brit said about the entire Torah, all the mitzvahs. Val Hamila. And on this one mitzvah of Brit Mila, Nichritu Shloshasre Britot. Im Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu got 13 times the word Brit mentioned about Brit Mila. Ve'etna Briti Beniu Venecha. Ani Hine Briti Itach. I'm giving you my covenant. My covenant is with you. Vahakimoti et Briti Beniu Venecha. I'm going to establish my covenant to me and you. Livrit Olam. For an eternal covenant, that's four. Va'atad briti tishmor, guard my covenant. Zot briti asher tishmor, this is the covenant you should guard. Va'hayal le'od brit, it will be for a sign of a covenant. Va'hayta briti bivsarchem, my flesh, my covenant will be in your flesh. Livrit olam, eternal covenant. Et briti hefar, you can destroy my covenant. Va'akimoti et briti ito, I make a covenant with him. Livrit olam again. Ve'et briti akimet yitzchak, and the brit with yitzchak. So we see here that one mitzvah has 13 times a brit over all the mitzvot. Brich rachamana desayan. Blessed Hashem for helping us, granting us assistance. And many kitveyad, we're going to say what we have at the end of the book, because technically the book finishes over here. Nigmar Sefer Sheni, book two is completed. Uminyan Prakav Shisha Barbaim. Like the last book, same amount of chapters, 46 chapters. Hilchot Kriyat Shema, Arba'a Prakim. The laws of Shema, four chapters. Hilchot Tfilao Berkat Koanim. The laws of prayer and Berkat Koanim is Chamisha Asar Prakim, 15 chapters. Hilchot Tfilin Umizav Sefer Torah. Asara prakim, ten chapters of those. Hilchot tzitzit is shlosha prakim, three chapters. Hilchot brachot, achad asar prakim, eleven chapters of blessings. Hilchot milah, shlosha prakim, three chapters of hilchot milah. Mazal tov, part one, for finishing book two. There's still a little bit more for the next four days till we actually finish book two. Vesat Hashem.